Hi everyone, welcome to today's live stream. Um, please be kind, I'm here on my own today. Um, as always, let us know, can you hear okay? Can you see okay? Um, what has everyone been up to this week? Has everyone been making anything interesting? What have you been doing with Fusion? So, yep, yeah, please let me know, can you see, can you hear? Um, let me know if there are any problems. Spencer normally is very good at checking that, but he's, uh, he's left me, he's on holiday this week, so I'm here on my own. We're going to be looking all about measuring and inspecting parts um, today. So this is something that's quite close to, to my heart. And, um, oh, see, Stuart Duncan said about the laptop stands, I'll cover that in a second. But, um, yeah, so inspection and quality is something that's quite close to my heart. This has been what my job was before I, I joined Autodesk. I was in quality control. So, yeah, I've spent most of my life making what we call control plans. We'll touch upon that later. Um, but yeah, it's all about inspecting and measuring your parts. You know, a, a old boss of mine once said, you know, if you can't measure it, you can't control it. And I think that's a really key thing that it doesn't matter what type of equipment you've got. If you're making things with a hacksaw or if you're making things with a 3D printer or precision CNC machines, um, you know, you've got a tolerance to work to. I don't care if that tolerance is in millimeters or microns. It's important to you. And we're going to talk about how we can look at controlling that and measuring it and tracking it today. So, hi everyone. Um, hi Stuart. Um, Stuart's um, got his laptop stand. So, yep. Yeah, so, some of you might know that last November we had Autodesk University. Um, we have finally, finally posted every single one out. Um, a lot of my time at the moment is uh, helping out people that have got slight customs problems where they've moved addresses or moved companies. But yeah, it's um, it's good to see the laptop stands hitting people. Please um, take a picture or a video, chuck it on Instagram with hashtag AU2020. I'm going to try and collect them all together and just, you know, help show people what we've done. Um, the more positive feedback we get from these sort of free giveaways, the more likely that they are going to happen in the future. So please, if you want to see this sort of thing happen again... Um, then post it on Instagram and it, it helps us show what a brilliant thing it was to, to give all these gifts away. So yeah, uh, is there anyone else out there? The, hopefully people are joining us today. I know we might be slightly earlier for the um, for the American crowd because um, of course daylight savings has kicked in over there, but not over here yet. So it might be slightly different, but hopefully everything's okay. Um, the chat is very quiet, everyone. Can you hear me? Can you see me? Hopefully everything's going okay. I'd normally uh, say Spencer normally does a very good job of, of letting me know um, what's going on. So hopefully you can all too. So brilliant. Let's have a quick look at Fusion then. So what we're going to be talking about today is manual inspection inside of Fusion. So a lot of the stuff that I normally work on and the videos that I do um, are to do with using probe tools on a machine tool. But what we're going to look at here is using different equipment. So I've got some of it around me. So, you know, we've got a manual um, manual caliper here. Um, it's not called a vernier. It's called a caliper. Can anyone tell me what, what, what does vernier actually mean? If you know in the chat, let me know and we'll see if anyone gets that. Because for people who call that a vernier... You are slightly wrong, and uh, there's a reason behind it. So we've got equipment like that. We've got a, a nice, heavy, heavy height gauge we're going to be using later. Um, and then we've got some other bits and pieces. We've got this manual bore mic that we'll be having a quick look at. So this is a... There we go. That's what we call a manual bore mic. There's three points on there, and as you twist the end, those three points expand really good for measuring internal holes. Um, but they do have their limitations, which again, we'll talk about later. So what we basically, about a year ago, uh, myself and the development team um, that deal with the metrology, uh, that do all the stuff with the probing, we were talking about how can we allow other people that haven't got probes to actually inspect on their machine tools and get everything working. So that was what we were trying to do. We were trying to let people know, well, not let people know, we we're trying to show people how they can actually inspect and we thought what has most people got out there and most people have got these you know these calipers and and uh, there you go and micrometers people have got these knocking around right from the hobbyists up to i'm gonna say you know, f1 precision teams everyone's got these tools that they use and people are familiar with them so 
we can't control them like a CNC machine because that's sort of what Fusion Cam is. You know, we control CNC machines with toolpaths. But what can we do? Well, we can allow you to store the data um, that, that you measure with. So, so, so you measure and then we can allow you to store that data inside of Fusion. And then we took it one step further. Let's be able to allow you to make a measurement plan as well. So I mentioned before control plans. Let's quickly have a think about parts. So this is the part that I've got here. This is, uh, we actually run something called a machine appreciation course at Autodesk for employees only, unfortunately. But it's a way of us sort of, you know, showing people that don't know what CNC machines are, a way of giving them a little taster to CNC machines. But it's, it's quite a nice little part. So what it means, it, what, what it allows us to do is lots of prismatic shapes, hot, nice hole in the middle, some decent features on it that we can measure. But what I've got to think is, let's say I'm making one of these. If I'm making one of these, pretty much every feature is actually quite important to me because I'm only making one, I need it to be right. Um, so I'll probably measure almost everything on that first part because I need to make sure it's right you know I might be selling this or it might be going into an assembly that I'm making myself so I'll pretty much measure most of the things on it I mean if you look at that hex for example on there I probably won't measure every single side of the hex but there's no reason why I, why I can't or why I shouldn't really it's all always up to me but then if we think about production runs of components this is where it gets slightly more involved and you basically have to take your part and think of what features are likely to be wrong throughout the production run? For those of you that know this sort of thing, um, it's called um, SPC or statistics, ugh, statistical process control. What you effectively do is you measure, let's say, 100 parts in a production run. You measure features on all of them. And then this gives you an idea of how likely it is to actually um, go out of specification. So if you measure the width and the width keeps varying all the time, this statistical process control will let you know that that feature is really likely to actually go out of tolerance, so you need to measure it more. So what we do is we look at this part and think, right, in my production run, um, for my first off, so when I set the job up, I wanna measure lots of these features because lots could be wrong. I could have set the fixture up wrong on the machine, I could set tools up wrong. That's gonna be my first off check. And then throughout production, I'm going to really only check things that could change. And there's certain things that won't really change as, as the machine runs. Um, but there are things that will change with toolware, with potential machining issues as well. So without further ado, let's have a look at how we do this inside of Fusion. Everyone, the chat's really slow today. Is it because you, you'd prefer Spencer than me and because he's not here, you just not bothered um, but no seriously come on in the chat what people have been making where are people from what are people doing with fusion we always love to hear what's going on uh, and can you see me and hear me okay it's always very odd for me because i'm just talking to a blank screen hoping there are people on the other end listening to it so this is our part this is and then we've got fusion here so i'm going to delete what i've done so we can start from afresh we've got all our tool paths to do our top side here top side rough top side finish and then we've got some surface inspection as well there. So we've got some inspection as well there. So what we're going to allow us to do really is be able to measure our part um, on our machine tool. So what we can do is we can put those probe points on and then it's going to measure on our machine tool. And that's exactly what we've done there. So we've measured this curve and this feature or surface, whatever you want to call it, going around. And then we've got that confetti showing again. We can see that everything blue is above tolerance, so too much material. Everything green is intolerance, and everything red is below tolerance, so it's too less material or been, been overcut. So that's a big problem because you can't put material back on unless you're a welder. Um, I can also right click and go show results, and that brings up this lovely little table um, where I can click on some items and have a look, so I can have a look at everything there in that range. But again, the whole point of this is if you haven't got a machine tool probe, how can you still inspect your parts? Well, what we can do is we're going to go manual and we're going to create manual inspection. What this allows me to do now is grab that part and start putting basically a measurement plan together. 
So I'm going to measure the overall width of this part. So just select the two faces, and then hopefully you can see that little white dot there. That's going to allow me to put this somewhere that I like. Now, if I am the one setting up this um, measurement sequence and I'm the one executing on it later, um, I normally know what's what's been decided because I'm the one that decided it. But what if I'm a quality engineer or just you know I. I I'm not the one running the machine, um, you know, so that, that can happen. I need to really try and portray as best as I can what's going on here. So if we go top view and we put that somewhere where I want it, I can record the camera position. And what will happen then is as I play through these sequences later, it will actually put the camera position perfectly where I asked it to. So it really helps in showing the person inspecting the part what's going on. Let's call it main width. It helps very much caps lock on, doesn't it? Um, and then the tolerance, this is quite a loose tolerance on this part here, so I'm gonna go 0.25. What you might have seen there is whatever I type in the top, um, it automatically does it below. So this that actually was um, an idea we grabbed from stock to leave. But what I can do, if it's got a different sided tolerance, I can just type it in there as well. So don't be alarmed if you change one and the other one changes, you can then change that one to sort of break that link. Um, comments, if, you know, I could say use calipers. Use calipers for that. So brilliant. Um, yeah, we've got more people in the chat. Come on, everyone, keep talking in the chat. I want to know what are people doing, where are people from? Um, are you interested in inspecting your parts and measuring? I'd, I'd be really interested to know. So use calipers. Let's go to the next one. Let's do the length of the part. So there we go, there we go there. Let's pop that there. I don't want to re-record the camera position. I'm quite happy with it staying in that position that I was there. Um, let's call that main length. Let's call it length. Um, you've got to think as well, what you might have on a drawing is ref numbers. This might be like ref 002. You can put all sorts of information you want in there. Let's put that tolerance back at 0 0.25 and again use the calipers. Now onto another feature. Let's measure, let's measure the overall thickness of this part in two places. So I want to measure the thickness of the part from there to there. And let's just now grab that measurement just pop it somewhere where I'm happy with it. I'm just going to go slightly up on there. So you, what it does, it sort of locks there. You see that it locks into those vertical positions. If it does allow you to drag it wherever you want. It has got a bit of a lock at those, so it does help. I'm going to put the part about there um, and go capture position. Because again, what you've got to think about is you might be a meter or two meters away here from the actual fusion screen while you're measuring. Um, those are some really nice tiny fillets. I'm not quite sure where, maybe just here you're talking about, but um, SGT Kill, fair enough. Um, Sergeant Kill, that, that is. Um, good to have you on. Don't think I've seen you here before. So this is going to be part thickness. So part thickness is there. I'm not going to do record calipers and everything. You get the idea. And let's go for part thickness down here because that's a step that I could do. So there's two ways that I could measure this now. I could have measured the drop from there to there. I could measure the thickness there. There's some key things here now. Again, I haven't got a drawing that I'm working from. Um, some might say that's bad practice, but I haven't really got a drawing for this part so I can't help it but what you should really have is a datum face that you constantly reference off um, and why is that important let's say this bottom here is our reference face and I want to measure the thickness there and then the thickness here what I've done is on that part thickness one up here that is from the reference face to basically the face that I am inspecting this one here is from the reference face to the next face that I'm inspecting. Let me just make this thickness too, before I forget. So that is what I would call good practice, because you're using the same reference face and going from there both times. What I wouldn't advise is to measure the drop between there and there. Unless your drawing, of course, asks you for that drop. But the problem with doing that drop there is... If you inspect from here to here 
and this face is over ever so slightly too big. Let's just say it's 28 and it's half a millimeter. Now this drop here, if that measured eight millimeters, well, is that correct? Because it was that face that was wrong. So do you want to know from that face to that face or the drop from there to there? So it's really important to have a look at your part and think, what are, what are the features that I'm trying to measure the one feature to the next feature? So it does make a big difference. So I've got those on there. Let's quickly measure this rear rectangle. I definitely want to record the camera position there. And don't worry, as you go later, all these actually disappear, but they're left on now so you can see where they'll all be in the report. So this is rear block. Um, and now let's do that middle bore in there. So let's turn that around, zoom in, add another measurement, record the camera position. Um, again, we've got the, the lovely handle. What I can do is hold shift and then that actually brings it out of the hole a little bit as well. So if you wanted to do that for the way your report's going to look, you can do that as well. I'll leave it there. So this is going to be main hole or main bore. And this is quite a tight tolerance. Let's go 0.01 on there, plus or minus. And I want to use, um, I'll use the bore mic for this. There we go. And then the last one, I want to measure something with the height gauge. Let's measure the drop from there to there with the height gauge. So let's click on that face to that face. And we've got this measurement of five millimeters. I'm just going to drag that over to there, go back and then record that camera position here for me. And I'm gonna do um, rear thickness. You can see I'm really inventive with the names that I'm using. And let's make this um, 023, why not? And then use height gauge. So what does everyone think here about um, doing manual measurements? How many people out there, come on, let me know in the chat. Has, there, has everyone got calipers? micrometers height gauges i want people in the chat to let me know what sort of equipment have they got um be really interested to know have you just do you just use rulers or rules um to to do it my grandfather would not let me call that a ruler he'd say a ruler is someone who sits on a throne and um, this is a rule not a ruler I've got a big um, Canadian following today. Thanks everyone. Uh, I'm not sure how that's happened, but um, hopefully everyone's here. So hopefully everyone's enjoying that. Um, so Stuart Duncan has got the equipment, but doesn't use it for fusion recording. So Stuart, after this, I'd really like to know, do you think you're going to use what I'm showing you? Be really interested to know if this has been useful. So I've now got my measurement plan all sorted. Let's hit OK on there now. And what you can see in the browser is effectively we've got all those measurements that we defined so we've got the main width the main length all as items like toolpaths um, you can post process these they do absolutely nothing if you post process them so don't don't worry if you do post process them um, as, as with other toolpaths but they won't do anything so don't worry if you do it but don't expect them to do anything if you do post process them the, the post processor just ignores um, the manual inspections because CNC machines can't pick up calipers and use them that's what the probes are for so I've now got that basically that sequence that I'm going to do I'm going to call this like my first off so let's call this first off. What I might have though is a subset of this. So if I duplicate this here, what I might do is I might call this my in process. My in process. And in my in process, I might have half of these measurements. Let's just delete some out of it. So my in process check is not as in depth as my first off. And that's really common in industry. Chris out there saying he's got calipers and height gauges. So again, Chris, challenge for you, well not a challenge, but an ask is after this, I want to know, would you use this? Why wouldn't you? Or do you think this is going to be really useful to you? Be interesting to know. I'm now going to right click on my first off and go record manual inspection. So what we've got here is that camera position. I mean, how cool is that? It's just flipped it around presented it to us in exactly that camera position 
idea. Now, these are my calipers. My calipers might be slightly different to yours. Um, it's that lovely little Bluetooth symbol on them there. Yeah, you've guessed it. So if I open my calipers and I go over the part, again, I'm doing this backwards so you can see, and I hit the data button right here. Are you ready for this? Puts the number straight in Fusion and goes to the next feature. I hope I'm going to get some uh, wows and some oh yes in the, uh, in the chat there because this is just absolutely brilliant. So again, in there, hit the button, goes to the next one. Don't worry if you do not have Bluetooth calipers. Um, we're, we're not going to say that you can't use this. So if I do this the old fashioned way, if I measure that now, I've got 27.57. I can just type it in 27.57 and hit enter and I'm on to the next one. There you are. I can see though I didn't do the camera position check. That's why it's so important to do the camera position to move it around. Um, I think Sergeant Kill is quite interesting there in those Bluetooth calipers. <laughs> um, so what we've got here as well, we've got my um, micrometer. It's got a cable attached to it, so it works pretty much the same as the Bluetooth ones. So I've got that 20 millimeter measurement there. Let's pan this camera down so you can see that I'm not cheating. I'm just going to put that in there, do the good old few clicks, give it a little wobble that way to make sure that you're not on an edge. And then this has got the data button on the side. Hit that data button, progresses to the next feature. I'm now measuring the, the rear um, block of my part. So let's go from there to there and let's hit data entry and then that bore in the middle. Let's grab our bore mic out. So this is a, a three point bore mic. You see there are three measuring feet or whatever you want to call it, pools maybe. As in with a W, pools. Um, yeah, so that's a, a Bluetooth caliper. So there's the Bluetooth ones, right, I'm responding to the chat. These are Bluetooth calipers. Um, you can get lots of different makes of them. So they just connect like any other Bluetooth device. They're effectively like a Bluetooth keyboard. Um, they just send the data over. And then this is a, a corded um, micrometer. So again, there are lots of different ways and they literally just work like a keyboard. I could have opened up Microsoft Word or any other thing there and I could have used that and it would have just put the entry in. So, right, I've now got to teach myself how to read a vernier scale again. I haven't done this in a while. So there is, there is, oh, I don't think I'm going to have to show you this on the camera very easily. So for those of you that haven't read vernier scales before, you basically got the, the, sort of basically everything bef after the decimal point there on these, and then these are before the decimal point. That was a really bad way of me explaining it, but hopefully you get the picture. And then you look at the, Basically, it tells you on the side what each, if I can get that to show in focus, what each increment is. So each increment on here is five microns. So let's just go in here and right, there we go. So what I've got, this is 20.02. So I can type in there now, 20.02. Goes to the next feature and that's the drop. So now you're going to enjoy seeing me manhandle the height gauge. Um, a quick point on these three-point bore mics. They are absolutely brilliant. One thing they do not measure, though, is if your hole is oval. Because there's three points, they'll always give you a really strong reading. But I've had it in the past where we've used these and thought the hole was perfect. But the problem is... Um, if your hole is oval, you won't detect it with one of these. Sometimes it's best to use a two-point bore mic and check it at different degrees going around, like check it with them vertically, with them at 45 degrees, with them at 90 degrees, and that might give you an indication if the hole is oval or not. So three-point bore mics are really good and stable to use, but you can have issues with ovality and measuring oval holes with them. I've now got my height gauge. So normally with height gauges, you have a tungsten carbide tipped foot. So that can go in here, that can then go in there. And I'm sorry to anyone out there. Yes, I am doing this on a, on a wooden surface, which is very bad practice, but that's what I've got. Um, so I'm gonna zero it off on the base there. So zero, 
and then let's go actually I'm not zeroing off the base am I I'm zeroing it off on that face there so zero off on that face there there we go zero and then come down to this face and I am 5.16 so 5.16 and enter so that's it I've now done a full measurement sequence of my part so that's my part now fully inspected what I've got here is all the measurements only one of them is intolerance and um, this was a scrap part that I picked up so that's why that is but yeah there we go I've got the nice intolerance one there the brilliant thing here is I could actually mix and match those probing results from our on machine probe with the inspection results here now so um, no Chris sorry my bore mic is not Bluetooth um, I wish it was but it's not it's got the old-fashioned vernier scale on it so I have to try and remember my college days of how to read those bits of equipment what I could do now is I could place this um, in a view that I liked I mean I could go through and turn some different bits on let's place it in that view again I could do a much better job of positioning these I'm going to right click save inspection report and I'm just going to quickly yeah inspection report 11 is fine for me on that um, and hit save and what this is going to do now is make a printable inspection report for me so you can see that you get that snapshot that we just had in fusion showing up there and then I scroll down and we have got the measurements from our probe here and then we have got all those manual inspections all listed here so again imagine if I am um, selling this to a customer or if I just want to keep records of this myself you can now attach this in any way you like you could actually upload this to fusion team and keep it on fusion team and send people a digital copy you know we can save the trees and we can not keep printing stuff out all the time um, or we can have a PDF and we could email that as well with an invoice or if you've got a system that allows you to do that but you could always just put this on fusion team and go from there so one last thing I want to do before I let everyone carry on with their day um, is just show you the process here that you can do. So you can do a first off with lots of measurements and then you can do an in process check then on the day and you can name it. And then you've got a whole record of all the different parts you've made. So this gets really useful if you're trying to track lots of parts, how well you've done them. Another thing we can do is let's make some, let's make some new manual measures here, create manual measures. And I wanted to actually check these holes to make sure if their thread is okay. I haven't got a thread gauge on me, but we, we can imagine I have. So I'm going to add another one there and make it a pass fail item and call this M6 holes. I'm then going to go use thread gauge to check M6 holes. M should have a capital. There we go. So that's in there. I'm going to add another one that's going to go um, pass or fail. Surface finish should be, what are we going to go for? 5RA. I've defined that wrong, but I'm not going to change it. So we can use surface finish tester. So as you, as you basically get the idea is you can now start to build this up with more than just linear measurements and the very last one I'm going to go for is text um, this could be done for all sorts but I'm going to use it for inspector name so inspector name um, and there we go so let's hit OK on there now um, let's just drag these into the bottom of that first off so it helps if I put it in the fold that always helps now right click and record manual inspection. Let's quickly whiz through all of those with my Bluetooth ones. Let's just do this nice and quickly. Also, so you get to see how fast this actually is when you've got connected equipment. You know, imagine this now when you're measuring, you can just keep going through your part, checking the different features without having to touch your keyboard at all if you have the connected equipment. And then last one is a drop of five. I really don't like using verniers, uh, sorry, calipers in this way, but it's better than doing that. Right, so now I've got M6 holes. So if I had the little thread gauge now, if I had it on me, I forgot it from the office and 
I wasn't going back in today just to get that. So if I screw the thread gauge in and we're all good, I can pass that off. And then, there we go. And then we've got a few more here. We've got, if we go to next, surface finish. I could use a surface finish tester, those little needles that drag across the finish. We could pass that and we could go to next. And then inspector name. So we've got R S T U B L E Y. That's me. So what we've got here is all of those bits of information now in another set of inspection reports. So I can right click, show results, and we can see the results here in Fusion. So I can see that we've got pass pass, we've got my name, look, we've got all the information that we need to really evaluate um, this um, feature on there. And I want to just hit on something that Chris has said. You know, this is proof that Autodesk is constantly um, developing. We really are. I mean, I was in the initial conversations of this about this time last year. This was released, I can't remember when, let's say middle of the year. I did a, a preview tutorial on it. Um, we really are trying to make functionality that everyone can use. You know, we do sometimes really go down specialist routes. Some of the probing stuff that I do, you really need, you know, um, the, the specialized equipment to do it. But we try to do here something that absolutely everyone can use and is really useful. Again, if you're doing 3D printed parts, you can measure them doing this. They haven't got to be CNC machine parts. You just make a setup and then start putting manual measures in a setup then. So absolutely anyone, you can, you can use a ruler, a rule, and you can just type in those measurements. This is a really good way of you keeping track on how your parts are going to fit together and create inspection reports. If anything, it's just good practice to be checking your parts and doing it. Um, some people are going to go and look for some Bluetooth calipers. Again, yeah, I've got a range of different bits of kit. I've got those Bluetooth ones. I've got, got the old wired ones. Um, you can get ones that like go to a wireless hub. And then all those get together and that goes into your PC. There's a couple of different ways of doing it. Um, got Ted on the call, and another Canadian. Ted was a Brit and he's, um, he's on there. We've got a lot of Canadians on the call today. I'm not sure why, but um, I'm happy about it. So, yeah, but everyone, hope you've enjoyed the live stream today. I'm trying to keep a bit short. They, they get a bit too long at the moment. An hour's far too much for anyone to listen to me for. So hopefully this has been useful. We're going to try and do some um, some of these more you know short, sharp live streams rather than the big long tutorials. This was all about manual inspection. Let me know in the chat or in the the comments down below as as the time goes on. Um, have you used this, Stuart? This is one for you. What do you think? You know, you've watched this now. Do you think this is something you will be using? I'm putting you on the spot here, but you're the only one that chirped up at the start. So, uh, so more for you for for, for for volunteering. But no, it'd be really interesting to know what have people thought about this. Um, I'm on the team that works on a lot of this inspection stuff, so we do love the feedback and we do try and make sure that what we're putting in the product is really what you want and need uh, and, and we do feel like we, we are doing that at the moment so thanks everyone um have a brilliant day really appreciate you tuning in um to do it um everyone's going to jo join the other live streams yet yeah, make sure you watch other live streams i think angelo's got one coming up soon um but yeah brilliant everyone just try and it'll be doing so in the future brilliant yeah so Stuart there saying he's going to be doing this sort of stuff in the future brilliant to know so everyone, thanks very much for your time. Really appreciate it as always. And see you all again next time. Bye.